Hey guys, it's Mr. Ross. We uh, we have our hat. We're going to go fishing in a river. Um, we're going to go take a look at some of the features. And before we do that, we're just going to cover some important concepts about rivers and streams and weathering erosion and deposition. So remember, the focus of this is actually the weathering erosion and deposition, but I want you to be able to take a look at um, what features are created and how they're created. So let's take a look here. All right, so we have a picture of a river right there. Um, there's all sorts of different features that are made out of weathering and erosion and deposition processes on this river. Uh, this is actually part of the Amazon rain for, or sorry, the Amazon River. These things right here form by deposition. These banks kind of along here and up here form by erosion and weathering. We're going to go through how do I actually know that. So the first thing you need to know is it's actually it's all about the energy. Um, we're going to look at the kinetic energy of the water because that's what determines which process is going on. Kinetic energy, I have right here the equation. Kinetic energy is one-half mass times velocity squared. Now you don't need to know that equation. You're not going to have to calculate anything with that, but here's the deal. If we have more mass, it's got more energy. If we have more speed or velocity, it's got more energy. So wherever the water is faster or if we have more of it, it's able to move stuff because it has more energy. So this first point here is if the kinetic energy of the water is high, we have weathering and erosion. So look where it's moving fast or where there's a lot of it. If the kinetic energy of the water is low, we deposit. So if you have stuff that's sitting in the water, but then that water just kind of doesn't have much more energy, um, it's just going to settle out in the water. Okay, Think about like if you stir something up in a cup that has like a bunch of sand, that sand will stir up with the cup, but as soon as you stop stirring, bah, it's going to fall down and sink to the bottom. Okay, That's because the energy was high when it was moving around, then it's low and everything sinks down. So you want to look for relative energy amounts to see what's going on. <clears throat> now, these are some features of a stream that we're going to take a look at. We're not going to look at every single one of these, but we're going to look at a couple of these real-life examples. And then you're going to need to definitely know this Oxbow Lake one. This is one that, uh, for whatever reason, everybody loves to talk about this one. So real quick. All streams and rivers have some kind of a source. It might be a spring somewhere. It might be a glacier really far away. It might be a lake that was created by, um, you know, just a bunch of water pulling up from runoff. But it's got some kind of a source. And that water eventually runs downhill. It's going to find what we call the path of least resistance. It's where there is kind of the lowest point. Um, and that lowest point changes a little bit every once in a while, which we'll talk about. But... Um, when things are going downhill, they gain speed because they're really up high and they have a lot of potential energy. So remember, the higher the energy, the more weathering and erosion we have. So higher up in the river when it's steep because it's still at the mountains or whatever, you're going to have weathering and erosion. <clears throat> then when you get farther down to a floodplain like this, this is a picture of a floodplain, it's, the river water is going to find this path of least resistance. So if you look here, it kind of winds around. It follows that path of least resistance. Now we have some different features here. We're only going to point out a couple of them. Um, one of the big curves is called a meander. A meander is a just big curve. Okay, Again, it's following that path of least resistance. Um, oxbow lakes are old meanders that have gotten cut off. And we'll talk about that process here in just a second. A point bar is where we've had some deposition, and it's kind of, you can see it's pointing into the water. Um, the opposite side, like over here and over here, those would be cut banks or undercut banks, just depending on who you're talking to. Um, the last thing we're going to point out and some of you guys may have heard of these, especially in areas where there's like flooding from hurricanes or big storms or whatever. Natural levees. A levee is just a buildup from deposition. So when a flood happens, the water spills over the banks a little bit. Um, it's in like a flatter area, so it kind of settles out. 
and right here near the edges of the bank it deposits a little bit more of the the heavier stuff so it builds up a high bank and that's called a levee okay all right so we're going to do a quick experiment just to prove that water is uh is going to do more weathering and erosion where it's fastest okay Millie, you're on the outside curve. I'm gonna have you drop it in and we're gonna count to see how long it gets, takes to get to that big rock right there. You ready? Okay. Set, go. One, two, three, oh, no. four, five, six, seven. All right, this time you're gonna put it on that side. Are you ready? Three, two, one, go. One, let it go. Just let it go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. All right. So that test shows you that the water goes fastest on the outside curve. It only took like seven seconds to get to the rock on the outside curve, but almost twice that, 13 seconds, on the inside curve. So there's more kinetic energy on the outside curve. That's where we have weathering and erosion. On the inside curve, you usually have deposition. One more thing that affects the amount of weathering, erosion, deposition, especially in streams, is what type of sediment do we have? So that over there on that far bank, that's kind of like the grayish color that's clay and that's very compact it's harder to weather hey you quiet while i teach over here you can see you've got all these rocks and loose sediments these are the things that will get washed away because they're not as tightly compacted um, they're not holding on to each other so the forces are not as difficult to overcome so you don't need as much energy to break this stuff up so this stuff can move around all that that stuff over there is a pretty permanent feature because it's clay, hard compacted, holding itself together. This is another feature of uh, river and any kind of water erosion. Yep. The steeper the slope, no, the faster the water, no, and the faster the water, the more the energy, the more the energy, no, the more weathering and erosion. So down here where it's very steep, you can see that the water's moving fast. You're gonna have a lot of weathering and erosion going on. No. Down here, where it's pretty deep and where I'm standing even. I'm trying to teach, kiddo. Over there you can see, there's a lot of deposited stuff, so. Now let's get some real life practice with you guys identifying some um, features out in the field. All right, so this stream kind of curves. That's the outer curve. This is the inner curve. The outer curve is faster, and the reason why is because when the water gets going here, it's gonna wanna keep going straight forward. So it'll curve kind of like that. You have this bank, so it wants to go curve right around there, and you can see how fast it gets over there. That's because there's less friction slowing it down. Now, if we look over there, there's another example. That stream is coming right this way. It wants to keep going that way. That's because of something called inertia. So friction from the banks and everything eventually pulls it back around. That's why we get water, but it's always faster on the outside, slower on the inside of a curve. This right here is where we've had a lot of the positive stuff. You got this little island in the middle. Um, we're gonna look out there is kind of the outer curve and here's the inner curve. You can see kind of right there, that's what we call a cut bank. This thing is a point bar or a sand bar, just depending on who you talk to. But this is a depositional feature because there's less energy here. You can see there's more energy over there. Water's moving faster, so it cuts into that bank. So erosional weathering feature, depositional feature. All right, before my daughter shows up here, we have the creek. This is a feature. That's a feature. You need to be able to name each of them and what process forms them.
All right. I mentioned earlier we're going to take a look at this Oxbow Lake. Now, Oxbow Lake, as you can see right here, it's that big curve that was a meander, but it got cut off. So I'm going to point out how that kind of happens. Water is sloshing back and forth. We kind of talked about it's fastest on the outer curves and it's slowest on the inner curves. So on the inner curves, there's less kinetic energy, so we deposit. On the outer curves, there's more kinetic energy, so we're cutting farther and farther out. And so the stream keeps getting more and more curvy. Um, eventually, if you were to follow this water down, though, whoosh, cut, 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 cut. This area right here is kind of the breaking point between when it's cutting and then over here is kind of when we start depositing it again. Right here, if we keep cutting farther and farther and farther and farther, we're eventually going to meet the other side. Now I have another video that you guys can watch where this actually happens and you can watch it in like a, about a minute um, on a stream table. All right, you can watch this stream table. You can see that we're cutting on the outside curves, depositing a little more on the inside curves, just like we talked about. We're gonna watch the water over here. Watch how it's cutting along this curve right here. Okay, eventually we're gonna add some more water to the stream table. Eventually it cuts so that, watch it. Oh my goodness! All the water just bypasses the meander that used to be over here. And you can see it has its own new route that it takes. And it's going to even cut across here eventually um, if we just watch. Yep, so it, it even cut. There's some meander scars over here that form. But this guy right here, this is our oxbow lake. It's still filled in with water a little bit. That water's not moving, so we're going to deposit and deposit and deposit. And eventually this thing is going to fill in and you can see it from an aerial photo, but it won't be any kind of water filled thing anymore. So um, I would go back and watch that video real quick. You can see again, it's cutting on the outside is because the water's coming down. Most energy is diverting right here. This is lower energy up here. So we deposit there. Okay. Eventually if we let this thing run long enough, it would just cut all the way through here again. All right, quick recap of everything we've gone over. Uh, more energy will determine, or sorry, will give you weathering and erosion. Less energy will give you deposition. Um, water is fastest on the outside curves, so that's where you can have weathering and erosion. And it's slowest on the inside curves, so you'll have deposition there. Another thing that affects it is the substrate. That's the substance that is underneath the stream. If you have stuff that's hard and consolidated, like solid bedrock, you're going to have less weathering and erosion, even if you're moving really fast. Um, if you have loose, soft sediments, those things are going to be weathered and eroded very easily. Uh, you need to be able to identify some of the major features that I have listed there. Um, also, whoops, explaining how those features are formed. And one that you want to focus on is the oxbow. It shows up all the time on state tests, is from what I hear. Um, one of the ta practice questions on the state test practice questions is an oxbow lake one and so I want you to be able to explain it using terms of weathering erosion deposition um, and explaining it using like meanders being cut off and all of that so um, enjoy the bloopers at the end I can set it down gently in the water set it down gently in the water that's deep water Ooh. ready what's your name buddy uh, Allison. look at me Look at me, two-year-old Anderson. You've got a bug bite on your head. All right. Okay. Right there in the middle. Be able to name the feature and what Can process I? forms it. That's not what I meant by name the feature. What's your name? What's your name? Ellie. And what's your name? Allison. Anderson, how old are you? Five. You're not five. How old are you? This many. Look, buddy. How old are you? I don't know. One, two. How old are you, Millie? Four. Okay. Here's what you guys are going to do. When Daddy says three, two, one, go, you're going to drop your bark in the water. Anderson, are you going to throw it? No. What are you going to do? Drop it. Drop it. All right. Millie's on the outside curve. Anderson's in the inside curve. Anderson. I want you to take one more step, just a little bit right there. And you're just gonna drop yours in, okay, ready? You ready? Three, two, one, drop it.
Wait, wait, wait. Freeze. Don't do anything, Millie. 